Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Hakan and today I'll be showing you how to version your APIs in ASP.NET Core. I'll be showing both how to version controller APIs and minimal APIs. So first let's go ahead and start with the controller APIs. I've got this simple weather forecast uh, template project set up. And to start versioning this, we'll use a popular NuGet package, which is the ASP.versioning. And for controllers, we'll need the MVC version. So let's go ahead and install that package on the controller example project. And next, what we have to do is add the API versioning services. So we'll say builder.services.add API versioning. And for controllers, we also need to call the add MVC method. Otherwise, it won't work. Next, on our controller, we'll add some attributes. So uh, first, we'll say API version 1, and we'll add a API version 2. Then we'll go ahead and copy this get method and create a version 2 of it. So let's go ahead and get v2 and let's call this get v1. So these have the same route, but one is a version 1 and the other is a version 2. And to differentiate them more, let's go ahead and change the summary to summary from v1 and the summary version 2. Let's go ahead and say summary from v2. And that's already pretty much it. Next. One last thing, and that is the uh, map API version attribute. So on the methods, we'll say map to API version 1. And on the v2, we'll say map to API version 2. And right now, this will work. We have our uh, we have a versioned API. So the API is running, and right now, if I send a request, I'll get a 400 bat request because I have no version specified. Uh, so the package has a default uh, API version reader that is using query string parameters. So we can add a query string parameter that's called API version and set it to one. And then we'll get the version one response. And if we set it to version two, we'll get the version two response. So that's great. Uh, but also next is the header responses. Right now we have no response or no information about which API versions are supported or deprecated. So we can add those by configuring some options. So this add API versioning method allows us to configure a couple of options. So by providing it a delegate, we can say options, <coughs> options dot, uh, default API version is new API version one. So what this will do is set a default for our API version. So when we don't specify any uh, version, it should default to API version one. But for that to work, we'll also have to assume a default version. So we'll say assume default version when unspecified and set it to true. So right now, if we uh, start this API again, and we remove the API version query string parameter. And instead of a 400 bad request, we should get the uh, version one response, which is a very nice feature. And next for the header responses, we can configure those by saying options.report API versions and set it to true. So right now if we go ahead and start the API again, and we make a request in the headers, we'll see that the API support versions are version one and version two. So this package allows us to use multiple versioning strategies, which are the uh, query string parameters. We can use media type headers, we can use uh, custom headers, and we can use HTTP uh, route parameters. And to configure those, uh, we can say options.api version reader. And this, so the default is the query string API version reader, but we also have the uh, header API version reader where we can use a custom header. So let's say API version. And now let's go ahead and restart the API. And now with uh, now we can specify the API version with our custom header by saying API version uh, one. And then we'll go ahead and get the version one response. If we set it to two, we'll get the version two response. Next is the uh, media content type version reader. So we can say media type API version reader, restart the API. So instead of API version, we can use the uh, content type header and set it to application JSON and using a semicolon and I'm saying V1 is uh, V is one and then we'll get the V1 response set it to V2 and we're getting the V2 response. Last but not least is the HTTP route parameter. So we can use the uh, new URL segment API version reader. And to make this work, we'll also have to update the route of our controller. So on the controller, uh, we'll add a suffix of V and then add a parameter of the version. So we'll say version of type API version. And this should already work. So let's go ahead and restart the API. And inside of Postman, we can just go ahead and delete the header and on the route. Right now, if we call the API, we get a 404 not found because uh, that route doesn't exist anymore. 
So we can add the route with the version saying v1, and now we get the v1 response, v2, we get the v2 response. So that's really great. So as you can see, it's really easy to configure the options and use the versioning strategy you like. So there really is no right or wrong approach about uh, picking your versioning strategy. Just pick whichever one you like and make sure you document it correctly and notify your users about how to specify the correct API version. Uh, one last thing is how to uh, communicate to your users which API versions are deprecated. So to do that, all we have to do is uh, on the API version attribute, add a second argument for deprecated and set it to true. So if we go ahead and restart the API and send another request on the headers, we can now see that the API version uh, which are supported is version 2 and the deprecated versions are version 1. So this notifies your users about migrating to the newest version. So that's really it. That's how to version your APIs with the API versioning package. And this package makes it really easy for us. It's a great package. So I really advise to use it if you start uh, want to start versioning your APIs. So moving on to the minimal API project, uh, versioning your minimal APIs will work pretty much the same way as versioning your controller APIs, only there where we used attributes for controllers, we'll be using a Fluent API syntax for minimal APIs. So first let's install the correct NuGet package, which is the asp.versioning.http. Uh, let's install this one. And then for the configuration and the service registration, we can use the exact same code as for the controllers. So let's go ahead and copy that and paste it right in here. Use the correct usings and remove this add MVC method because that's only on for the controllers. Next, for minimal APIs, we need this thing called a version set. So we'll say for version set is app.newAPI version set. And then we can add the API versions on here saying dot has API version, new API version one. And let's create a second one of version two. And then we can say build. And then let's go ahead and create a second endpoint with the same route. And uh, let's again change the summaries to summary from v1 and summary from v2. Okay. Next, to use the version set on these uh, HTTP vert methods uh, with API version set, and I will say a version set. And then say map to API version one. And then we can go ahead and copy this and paste it here. And then we'll say version two. Okay, and that should already work. Just let's go ahead and comment out this part of the code. And let's run our code. So the API is running and we're not specifying any version. And because we have the same options configured here, uh, it should default to version one. So when we send the request, we get a response from version one. And because we haven't configured the version reader, we comment that out. We'll be using the query parameter or the query string parameter. So we'll say API version is two, and that gives us version two, and this gives us version one. So that works exactly the same. And another thing with uh, minimal APIs is what you can do is use a group builder or a route group builder. So you can say var uh, version group is app.mapgroup, oh, app.mapgroup. And then you can define your endpoint right here. So I'll just go ahead and copy this, paste it in here. And then you can say something like uh, with API version set, version set. And then here, instead of using the app, you can use the group or the version group and use this one also. Then we can go ahead and remove this with API version set on the endpoints and just use the map to version one and map to version two. And we can also uh, delete the route because it will get the route from the group and this should still work. So let's go ahead and try it out. So if I now send a request, I get response from version one and from version two. So the code works exactly the same, only now we're using a route group builder instead of uh, giving the API version set to, the, to every separate API endpoint. So to communicate uh, deprecated versions for your minimal APIs, all you have to do is change the has API version to has a deprecated API version. And right now if we go and run this, uh, in the header response, we should say, uh, we should see that version two is supported and version one is deprecated. So that's how that works with minimal APIs. And one last thing I would like to show you is that you can use uh, multiple API version readers at the same time. That's not really recommended because you should really use one versioning strategy, but it is possible to use multiple. So the way to do that is by, let me uncomment this, uh, on the API version reader, 
configuration, we can use the API version reader class and on it is the combine method, which accepts multiple parameters for the iAPI version reader. So what we can do is say a new query string version reader and we can say new uh, header API version reader with the API version and we can say new uh, media type API version reader. So right now if we go ahead and run the API. So now again we can use the query string parameters version 1, version 2. Uh, we can go ahead and use the custom header by saying API version 1, version 2. And we can use the content type header. Content type application json semicolon v is 1 and v is 2. So we can use multiple API version readers. The only one you can't use uh, when using them in, co in combination is the HTTP uh, the URL segment API version reader because then the route really changes and then you'll have some conflicts. But we can use the URL segment as a separate one. So when we configure this to using the uh, URL segment, the URL segment API version reader, then we can go ahead and change our route to again a V suffix and then a version parameter of type uh, API version and that should work so let's go ahead and restart our API and then now we can uh, in the route give the specify the version so we'll say version 1 and version 2. So that's how to get started with versioning your ASP.NET Core Web APIs for both controllers and minimal APIs. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time.